So today we're going to be talking about Buddha Mekteya. You know that the Bodhisattva who is portrayed over here will be the Bodhisattva. And in this uh, aeon, it's known as the Bhadda Kappa. That's a fortunate aeon because five Buddhas will be born in this aeon. That's Kakusanda, Konagamna, Kasapa, Gotama Buddha, who is our Buddha, and then later Meteo Buddha. Now there are different types of Bodhisattva according to their predominant characteristic. Our Bodhisattva, who became Gotama Buddha, was a wisdom Bodhisattva. And because he was a wisdom Bodhisattva, he only uh, was fulfilling the perfections for four immeasurable amounts of time and a hundred thousand aeons. But there are two other types of Bodhisattva. One has a predominance of faith. The one with a predominance of faith has to fulfill the perfections not for four immeasurable periods, but for eight immeasurable periods and a hundred thousand aeons. And the third type, which is uh, exemplified by Meteya Buddha, is the type that has energy as predominance. So Meteya Buddha has to, when he's a Bodhisattva, he has to fulfill the perfections for 16 immeasurable periods and a hundred thousand aeons. Uh, aeon, as we've said before, is like from one big bang to another big bang. So this is an incredibly long period of time. It probably means as well, I mean it does mean as well, that Mekteya started a long time before our uh, Bodhisattva who became Buddha Gotama because he must have started uh, 12 aeons previous to that. And not 12 aeons, 12 immeasurable periods previous to that. Now, like our Bodhisattva, who I've said before, met all the Buddhas. We ha had a look at it before. He met 24 Buddhas before he became a Buddha and he was confirmed in his aspiration. So, the person who would become Meteya Buddha also met Gotama Buddha. And at that time, there was a king in Magadha, King Ajatasattu, who was a very famous king. And he had a son, Ajita. And this son, Ajita, he went forth and became a monk in Buddha Gotama's Sasana. Now, even when he was a novice, this uh, monk had great psychic powers. And he was, uh, because of uh, his skills and everything, then the Buddha pointed him out to the collection of monks and said that this monk, later, he will become Menteya Buddha. So he confirmed him in his aspiration. And it was at that time that the Buddha taught the Anagawansa, which is the lineage of the future, which tells about the coming Buddha Menteya. Now we know after Ajita passed away at Lord Buddha's time, he must have had another life in which he fulfilled uh, the perfections, especially he must have had a life parallel to the life of, of Vesantara, where he gave the great gifts and completed the perfections. But we don't have any information about that life. We can just infer it because all the Buddhas have this uh, thing as a, a dhammata or a natural occurrence that must happen with all the Buddhas. At the moment, what the, the person who will become Buddha Menteya is in Tusita heaven, which is where all the Bodhisattvas go 
before they come to their last birth. And he's known at present as Nata. Nata means something like a leader or a friend and a leader. It has these two meanings. So at the moment he's in Tusta heaven, which is how he's portrayed in this statue over here. The one in the corner. Not here. There. Okay. That's Mateya Buddha. He's portrayed, of course, like a Sri Lankan prince because this is a copy of a Sri Lankan statue. So he looks like how the Sri Lankans imagine uh, he would look like in heaven. So he looks like a Sri Lankan prince in this portrait. Now then, after Gotama Buddha, then lifespan has been decreasing for some time. And according to the way it's figured, then the lifespan will eventually get down to just 10 years uh, because people are getting more and more, uh, doing more and more wrong things, taking lives, stealing, sexual misconduct. We can see it all around us, actually. And this uh, increase in defilements leads to a decrease in uh, lifespan. So eventually it will come down to just 10 years. And at that time, people will realize that they've been on the wrong track. This is what we hope, anyway. And then lifespan they will stop taking lives, first of all. They will, they will, it's known as a period of swords where everybody is fighting. In fact, if we look around the world at the present, it's not far off that. Everybody is fighting everybody. Murdering people is going on all over the place like this. So it's kind of a coming age of the swords is how it's figured in the Buddhist text. Then they will realize that if they're taking lives, their own lives become shorter. So they stop taking other people's lives and then their age span increases. And then they stop thieving and their age span increases again. And they stop mis sexual misconduct, their age span increases again. And eventually it gets up to an immeasurable period so that they're living incredibly long lives. At that point, it reverses once again and it starts coming down. Now, when it gets down to 80,000 years, that is when Buddha Mentea is uh, born. It's always when the period is decreasing, the lifespan is decreasing, that a Buddha is uh, born. So, at that time, there will be a universal monarch in Jambudipa. Jambudipa is what we now call India, but it's bigger than just India, including places like Bangladesh, Nepal, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all that southern continent is what we used to call Jambudipa. So there will be a universal monarch, that's one person ruling over all of these lands, and his name will be Sankha. And now at that time in uh, Jambudipa, then the country will be very prosperous, and diseases and other afflictions will be very much less. So they only talk about uh, three afflictions at that time, which is desire, hunger, and old age. But no other diseases will be around. There will just be those three. And the country will be very prosperous, not like it is now, with a lot of poverty and a lot of disease, a lot of illness and so on, like that, and a lot of corruption and so on. It won't be like that. It will be a very prosperous country and a very wonderful place to be able to live. Now, at that time, when the universal monarch Sankha is reigning, 
he will have a Puruha, a Purohita, which is a Brahmi chaplain who is his advisor. And that chaplain will also have a son. The son's name is Ajita, just like the monk's name for uh, the person who becomes Buddha Metteya was also called Ajita, but that's his monastic name. In, uh, then during uh, Universal Monarch Sankha's reign, they will also be called Ajita. And Ajita, who becomes Buddha Metteya later, he uh, does all the normal sorts of things that we know from our Buddha Gotama. It means he sees the four sights. Yeah, that means he sees old age, sickness and death. And then he sees a monastic seeking the way out of that. And then after that, he goes to a Bodhi tree. But his Bodhi tree is a different tree. We've mentioned this before. Ours is this big tree, but um, but a Metteus tree will be an ironwood tree, a Naga tree. Uh, he will only do the austerities for seven days. Our Lord, but our Bodhisattva, of course, was doing austerities for six years. But for Buddha Metteus, he will only do for seven days. The uh, Naga tree is where the Bodhi tree now is in Bodh Gaya. So Bodh Gaya stays the same, but the tree is different at that time. And then after he's awakened, he will also go to uh, Isipatana, which is now Sarnat, in, uh, just outside Varanasi. And he will teach the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. All the Buddhas teach the Dhamma Chakra Pavatana Sutta. Later, the Universal Monarch Sankha will also listen to the teachings of Buddha Metteya. And when he's heard the teachings, he will give up his uh, monarchy to his son, of course. He will give up his monarchy and he also will go forth and then he will ordain. Now, I'm not sure how long our teachings are supposed to last. They said 5,000 years. At first they said 500 years, and now they talk about 5,000 years uh, for our teachings. So we're about midway point, 2,560 years into uh, this sasana. But Buddha, but Buddha Metteya's teachings will last for 180,000 years, or some say for 380,000 years. So that will be a much longer sasana. But people are living longer at that time. They're living 80,000 years. Of course, it's declining as the time goes on, but um, it's still a very long time that the sasana will be in effect. Now, in the Middle Ages, it was quite common for people who had not met Buddha Gotama, they would make an aspiration to meet uh, Buddha Metteya. Sometimes we see in the manuscripts that the people who have written the manuscripts or copied out the manuscripts, they say that they did this with the aspiration to be able to have the fortune to meet Buddha Metteya in the future. So it's a really great aspiration, but if you want to fulfill that aspiration, then you, know, you have to fulfill all the good practices like dana, sila, and bhavana to be able to get there in order to be able to, if you don't attain in this life or you don't attain in the future life, then you have to make these good practices, make this aspiration, and maybe you can meet Buddha Metteya in the future.
So everybody say sadhu.